Hello friends, welcome. Friends, one of my viewers asked me this interesting question and I picked it up because it will clear many of your misconception. So, people generally believe that if an operator has 5G standalone network, which they call true 5G, then their service quality and data speed will be better than a network which is non-standalone 5G, which is that of Bharti. Now, if you look at this question, it says that, sir, I am from Bihar. This is true that Jio claims that it has used the most advanced technology in 5G. Not only that, it has launched 5G, but also 5G advanced. But I personally witnessed that Airtel is not only more reliable, but also has an internet speed, which is 2.5 times that of Jio and it is more stable. Why? Now, this, will, this question and this experience, you will, it will confuse you. Right? Why? Why Jio is not at par with, at least at par with Airtel when Airtel's network is non-standalone 5G, not standalone 5G, right? Now, when I take you through this video, your eyes and, you know, brain is going to open and a lot of misconceptions are going to get clear, right, through this explanation. And that's why I picked up this video, uh, picked up this question. Now, what I'm going to do is because these kind of things are very difficult to uh, make you understand using static charts. So I have created animation and I'm going to take you through the animation. So this is going to, this animation is going to compare Jio's network and Bharti's network side by side from the point of view of spectrum bands and how they are integrated with each other. So Jio has got two distinct networks. One is 5G SA, another is 4G, right? So 5G SA is this part of the network which has been encapsulated by this dotted line. And then we have got 5G, uh, 4G, this is the bottom part of the network. And both of these two networks are being run by two different cores, right? One is 5G core, another is 4G core. Their core means that the traffic from these two independent blocks of network, which I'm going to explain to you, is flowing through different paths for processing. 5G is through a 5G core for processing, and for 4G, so we have 4G core for processing. Now, what are these bands? This is the 3500 megahertz spectrum band, which is 100 megahertz. This is the 700 megahertz spectrum band, 10 megahertz. This is the 2300 megahertz spectrum band, which is 40 megahertz. This is the 1800 megahertz spectrum band, 15 megahertz. And this is the 800 megahertz spectrum band, 10 megahertz, right? So very simple. Now let's compare Bharti's network side by side. Now, if you see, Bharti has got one single network. Right? And their 5G is not standalone. So, which is being run through a 4G core because you need a 4G anchor carrier. Here also you see they have got 3500, 100 megahertz, and then this they have got this 2300, 40 megahertz, and then they have got the 2100 megahertz spectrum, which Reliance Geo does not have, 15 megahertz, and their 1800, which Reliance Geo has got 15 megahertz, Bharti has 20 megahertz. And their 900 megahertz is broken into two compartments. I have broken it. I really don't know whether they are following this approach or not. There is a one GSM layer of 7 megahertz because they have total 12 megahertz. And then I've kept a small chunk of 4G, which is 5 megahertz in 900, right? So Bharti is working like this, whereas Reliance has got two distinct block of networks, right, which are two independent networks. They are not linked with each other. So let's continue with this simulation. You will understand what is going on. Now you see there is a mobile phone. You can see down below. And then there are two meters here. Now these meters I have just for reference purpose. The speeds may not be accurate, right? I just is just putting it for reference purpose. So when I run this, you'll see that the mobile phone is going up. Means Currently, it is being served by Jio's 4G network and it is getting a speed of 40 Mbps. Whereas in Bharti, it is being served by their 5G NSA network and probably it is hooked into the 3500 MHz network coverage and it is getting a speed of 250 Mbps, right? Because why? Because in case of 5G NSA, the 5G layer is acting as a supplementary layer on top of the existing 4G anchor carrier. So it's like almost like helping the speed to increase. It is not carrier aggregation. I'm going to explain to you separately what is the difference between carrier aggregation and the NSA kind of aggregation. But here you will get see that the speed is 250 Mbps, right? Now let's continue. 
Now suddenly if you see that the phone is now switched on to 5G SA core. Now suddenly the speed has increased to 200 Mbps. But here the network remains as the phone moves from in the, in the topward direction. The network actually remains stable. Means the phone is anchored to the same 5G NSA network. It is not changing. Okay, right? Now let's continue with the animation. Okay, now it has go. It is going up, right? The speed is remaining constant. Right? These speeds may not be accurate, but I'm just for the sake of reference, I've used this speed, right? Now there is a second pass. In the second pass, what has happened? This 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 particular block of spectrum here, which is 1800 megahertz spectrum, I have moved it to the top part of the of these of the network now it is now having 1800 sandwiched on top of the 800 megahertz spectrum and then on top of it we have got 3500 megahertz, uh, megahertz spectrum now this is now 5 5g advanced because 1800 megahertz spectrum is doing carrier aggregation on top of the 3500 megahertz spectrum now 4g is having only two layers one is the 800 megahertz layer, another is a 2300 megahertz layer. Now let's look at the second pass. Now second pass, what happens is, now we get a lower speed, right? Let me just pull this again back here. So you see that here I'm getting a speed of 25 Mbps. Now 25 Mbps speed is because that we have now removed the 1800 megahertz layer from this bottom of the, of the network, which is 4G network and moved it to the 5G SA network, right? So therefore now the speed has reduced from 40 Mbps to 25 Mbps. And now here in the 4G core, here there is nothing has changed because this is only 250 Mbps. Now see what's going to happen. As it moves top forward, now this has increased from 200 Mbps to 225 Mbps because there is an additional layer of 1800 megahertz, which is on top of the th existing 3500 megahertz spectrum. So this is carrier aggregation and that has made the network much more empowering compared to what it was earlier, where only this block of spectrum was there and the 3500 and the 700 megahertz spectrum was there, right? So let's continue with this. So when we move top here, you'll see that the speeds here will remain constant, whereas here, it moved from 25 Mbps because when the phone was switched to switched to uh, the um, the uh, the the lower part of the network, which is 25 Mbps, it has now switched from 25 Mbps to it has gone to when it go, when it moved up, it has gone to 255 Mbps because the lower portion of the network has now become less empowering compared to the top because now the focus is now on 5G SA compared to the uh, 4G network, whereas here the network structure has remained constant, right? So what is the point here which I'm trying to say? The point is that because our Geos network, if you look at the network again, let me just go back to the, the simulation here and stop the simulation here. If you see, in case of our Geo, we have got two distinct network. One is 5G SA network, another is the 4G network both are acting independently and when a subscriber can only switch between these two verticals separately it can't be switching between these two verticals these ne two networks can't be working as an integrated network just like bharti's network is because what is happening here in case of bharti's network as long as you are connected to you will always be connected to the 3500 megahertz spectrum provided you are in the coverage right of the 3500 megahertz spectrum and your 4g network will always remain alive because 4g core is going to be uh, you know is anchor carrier because the 4g is going to be anchor carrier which has to be an anchor carrier for 5g nsa to work because this is 4g core and 5g is only helping to supplement the download speed that's all it is doing therefore the speed does not remain uh, does not change as long as you remain within the coverage of the 5g network as, as soon as you go out of the coverage of the 5g network let's say if you're going here to the uh, 2100 megahertz spectrum then suddenly you will see that this speed that you are seeing here from 250 mbps it will drop to maybe 25 Mbps because now you have only 15 megahertz of spectrum and plus if you do CA maybe with 20 maybe you get a better speed but but in case of Reliance Geo you'll see that these are two distinct network either you are in this bucket 
in this compartment or in this compartment, right? And that's why, let's say if the phone does not have the capability to do uh, 5G, you will be sitting in this compartment or net, if the network is too congested, they will put you in this compartment or if the 5G network coverage is not there, you will, you, if you are seeing 4G, your speeds are going to be very, very low. So the reason Reliance network is not performing compared to Bharti's network is because of these two distinct compartments. That is the reason why. And the 5G network, the 5G network doesn't really have a very good support of the low frequency band and the mid frequency band. If the low frequency band was 20 megahertz, 700 megahertz or 20 megahertz, you may not get 250 Mbps or maybe 225. You would get a very good speed of 50 Mbps, 75 Mbps and will be more reliable. Right. Now, friends, one more concept which I would like to discuss here. What is the difference between this 5G advance, which is based on carrier aggregation versus the 5G NSA where there is no carrier aggregation? Because this is just acting as a supplement. It's like two different lanes. Traffic is flowing between two different lanes. Now for that, friends, I have this animation where I'm going to compare carrier aggregation and separate lanes, 5G NSA. So you'll see that there are two different bands. One is the bigger block of spectrum with the less coverage. Another is the smaller. Let's say this is 3500 and this is 700 megahertz, right? Because they have a longer coverage, but the width of this block of spectrum is less. Similarly, here also the same block spectrum. Now, here you are using 5G NSA, but here using 5G Advanced, which is carrier aggregation. So what will happen? So let's see. Now, in case of carrier aggregation, what happens? This two blocks of spectrum became, becomes one. But here it continues to remain separate. They are not integrated together in one block. So what will happen is that they are merged and the packets are now flowing, you know, within this block of spectrum as if this is a logically one single block of spectrum where these are two different blocks of spectrum. So this particular path is only helping to drive more, more, more traffic. So traffic is flowing from this mobile phone using these two different lanes. Whereas here, this is seen as only one single lane. Now the difference here is that you see the advantage here is that which I've listed down here. If you see advantage, it behaves as one pipe, smoother experience when one band weakens because this is looking as if that logically one particular block of spectrum and we have to do less juggling across app and flows and therefore there is, it is more seamless. There are no much signaling traffic on top of it to manage data. Disadvantage is needs proper device and network support. It is very important and depends upon the coverage of both bands. Because the both band does not have coverage, the CA will not work properly, right? Here, the advantage is that quick speed boost if 5G band is flat. And if you really get getting 5G, you'll get a very, very high speed. Works with the existing 4G core setup. And disadvantage is the phone split traffic between these two lanes and experience varies as the one lane fades. And then you have to synchronize these two packets separately you because here the packets are all synchronized here you have to synchronize or you need more signaling traffic so see how it how the the traffic flow is happening and what kind of advantage and disadvantages are there and that is why which is why friends here if you look at this particular network you will find that because 5g advance really does not have that kind of capacity Right. And 4G is a separate network and the phone will keep switching between these two block of spectrum, right, in a hard handoff where this is all seamless. As long as you are within this block of spectrum, you get a very good experience and then you have got a very, very solid 4G foundation with a very good coverage, which is 2100 megahertz, 15 and 1800 megahertz band and a layer of 900 megahertz, 5 megahertz, 5G, uh, 4G. So that's why, friends, Bharti network is much better compared to Jio's network because of this spectrum structure. So the bottom line is, the so story net net is the following, that even if you have SA network, it does not mean that your experience from data speeds are going to be better. Maybe you will be able to leverage uh, you know, better, um, uh, uh, you know, latency and all those features, you know, UE level slicing, etc., you can, you can do that with 5G SA, but since you do not have a good cost quality capacity at the low frequency band, you can't implement those features without congesting the best effort service service uh, users who will be using this and sharing this with the those 
users who are going to require all those slicing application. That's why Reliance Geo has not been able to offer those services yet. And even if they offer those services yet, the quality of experience for those people who are not using those services will be pretty bad because they will be squeezed out from the network. That's all friends in this video. I hope that you like this video and I'll come back with a new video on a new topic next time. Thank you very much for listening.